man and woman that goes to war anywhere would learn to claim those promises and put God first, I can guarantee you on the word of the living God, they can come back without a scratch. I can't think of anything worse. His wife and daughter died in a head-on collision. Then his granddaughter survived the accident but could die at any minute. Doctors wanted to pull the plug. Then he guarantees to the doctors that his granddaughter will live. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural! Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Thurman Scrivener. Listen, I've heard of sad situations, but this is one of the worst. I mean, it could happen to anyone. A head-on collision? I mean, this, this was what, October 13th, 2001? That's got to be one of the worst days in the history of your life. What happened? Well, Sid, on that day, uh, uh, my wife and daughter got up that morning to go to Brownwood, Texas to, to a birthday party. Did you have any premonition something bad was going to happen that day? No, sir. I mean, I just told my wife goodbye, you know, like normal. My daughter was 24 years old, and uh, my granddaughter was three, and they were going down there for a normal weekend. And when my wife left, she told me, she said, honey, we're going to go down, and we'll probably stay over Sunday. Uh, to have for the birthday party and everything and so they got up and left that morning at uh, 6 o'clock and so they could get there in time for a little uh, birthday party and a little ball game for some of the other uh, nieces and nephews children's uh, who the, the collision itself was the was the man drunk how were the circumstances well what happened uh, just uh, before my wife and daughter got into Stephenville Texas about four miles outside right on the pinnacle of a hill my wife's heart stopped and she veered into the left lane. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but when I heard that my wife had hit a truck head on at 70 miles an hour, I thought, although I knew my wife had no sleep the night before, virtually she was up getting things ready for mm -hmm. the party till one o'clock, because we went to bed about one, and then I knew she got up at five. And so, but my wife was a good driver. You know, she was not quite 60 years old, and we'd been married 41 and a half years, and so I knew her well. And so I couldn't believe that she would have went to sleep, you know. Yeah, can I see the picture of the collision? You have that. Yes, I have a picture of the car. I, I heard that you did, I but have. I'm just describing, though, 60 miles an hour. 70 head on, miles. 70 miles. You know, I'm trying to turn it around to find it, but it's this. There's, no, there's nothing left. This is, this is horrible. What, what was the first you heard about this? It was at one o'clock Saturday afternoon. Uh, I was over at a church. I was going to, I went over to a church to teach a healing school that day about God's Word. And uh, I'm just, I was an engineer, you know, and everything. And so, but I was a teacher of God's Word. And I went over to that church to teach God's Word. And a police officer walked in the back door at one o'clock. We were just getting ready. And uh, they had come to my house as a police officer about 10, 15. I'd left at 10 that morning to go, so I knew nothing about this. And when he walked in the back door, one of the ladies called me and said, Thurman, this police officer wants to talk with you. And I thought, gee, I wonder if I parked my truck in the wrong place outside or something. So I went back there, and he said, are you Thurman Scrivener? And I said, yes, sir. He said, do you have a wife named Betty? I said, yes, sir. He said, do you have a daughter named Amanda? I said, yes, sir. He said, sir, there's been an accident. I said, are they injured? He said, sir, they're both deceased. Stop. When you heard that, what was your first thought? I mean, of course, it went Shock, through my, I would, high, I would have my, to my heart like a knife, you know. But when he said they're both deceased, then my next thought, Lord, they're in heaven with you. And then my next thought was, how about the 
babies, because there was two babies in the car with him when they left that morning, my granddaughter and a little girl like her granddaughter. And he said, well, sir, they've care flighted them to Cook's Medical Center in Fort Worth, and they're both in very critical condition. You get to the hospital. The, uh, the, I understand the social worker uh, greeted you. What did she say? Well, she told me when I walked in, she said, sir, I need to tell you what you're going to see when you walk in that room. And I told her, I said, honey, I know what I'm going to see because I'm an engineer by trade, and I know what happens when two pieces of steel run together at 70 miles an hour, especially when one of them's a car and one's a truck. She said, no, you really don't, can't imagine what your granddaughter looks like. She said, sir, I hate to tell you, but it's not a chance that she can live. I said, oh, yes, she will live. She said, sir, it's, it, they tell me it's impossible. I says, honey, I know the king of the universe, and his name is Jesus Christ. And I said, he's given me his word. Did he, he speak to you? No, sir. No? No. So how did you say he gave you his word? Well, I mean, he gave me a book that's full of his word. And the Lord says in his word, he says, I exalt my word above even my name. Yeah, but people die all the time. Your wife and, and, and daughter just died. Yeah. So why shouldn't your granddaughter die? I mean, I hate to be hard, but yeah, I'm... Yeah. Well, uh, that's something I don't understand, Sid. I don't understand why the enemy was allowed to do this other than what I read out of the book of Job. See, in the book of Job, the same thing happened. The devil came before the king in heaven, and the Lord asked Satan, he said, what do you think about my faithful and trusty servant Job on the earth? And he said, well, he ought to be faithful and trusty because you blessed him with everything, a beautiful family and everything, and so he ought to be faithful and trusty. He said, you let me go down there and put some hurt on him, and I'll show you he'll curse you to your face. So the Lord gave him legal right. All right, let me ask you a question. Listen, you served God your whole life. Yes. Your wife and daughter, and now you, you, you weren't, you, they said you wouldn't even recognize your granddaughter, and she wasn't going to live. That's right. So why weren't you just a little angry with God? Well, again, I go back to the book of Job, and Job, he was not angry with God, and he worshipped Yeah, but that's God. Job. How could you do that? Because I knew that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he never Those changed. are cliches. I know, but I, I just know that in my heart. I know that this book called the Bible cannot lie to me. Now, I realize All that... Right. You see your granddaughter. Yes. Was the social worker right? She looked terrible, yes. Her, uh, she was unrecognizable. Her little face was tore all to pieces. I don't know how many bones was broken in her face. Everything was blood red. She was bleeding out her eyes, her nose, her mouth, her ears. Her face was so swelled, her you, skull. You must have been numb. You must have been shell shock. I, I, I walked in there knowing my king and his name is Jesus. And so by knowing that, I Oh, no, 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 you're telling me that now. You mean you really, oh, no. yes. you, 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 he, he lost his wife, he lost his daughter, his granddaughter is almost unrecognizable, no chance to live, and he's telling me that he is worshiping God? What kind of, that in itself to me is amazing. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Thurman Scrivener. Unbelievable. He gets the report, his wife died in a head-on collision. With his wife was his daughter dies in a head-on collision. His granddaughter, unrecognizable, no chance of living. He's in the hospital. He guarantees the doctor that his granddaughter will live. He goes into the room, totally unprepared. Were you so shell-shocked shell -shocked, or were you weeping when you saw her? I was not weeping or anything, Sid. What were I, you doing? I was just walking in, I was just walking in the power of the Lord. Uh, yeah, but if I saw, I, I don't know about you, but if I saw my granddaughter like that, I'd come apart. That's what everybody said about me. They've known me as a man that served God for many years, and, and I have been a unique person in the whole area, and everybody knows this. And I've been such a strong man of faith that so many people said that what I had taught, they, had, they saw in action that day as I walked into that hospital with no tears in my eyes, but walking in there in total faith that God would do what he said he would do. I walked in worshiping the king.
Now, and what did you do that, that evening? That evening I, I went in there and I stood between the two little girls' beds and I quoted the Word of God over those little girls. And for how it, long? Well, I quoted the Word and then stood there and worshiped and praised Him for the next 10 hours. 10 hours I stood there. Between you and me. Yes. What's going on here? I mean, after an hour, two hours, you see your, your granddaughter and her little friend both hanging on to for life. Uh, what's going on in your mind? Was it a fight? Oh, yes, yes. The enemy was there to convince me that it's impossible. He was saying, look at her. And I refused to look at her in the flesh realm, in the world of reality. I only looked at her according to the spirit realm which there's no limitations with God in the spirit realm. All right, after the evening, the doctors come in, they examine, they give their prognosis. What did they tell you? They said it would be impossible for Caitlin to live. The doctor walked up to me and he said, sir, you might as well give up. Did, didn't they say there was a slim chance? No, sir. No, he said there's absolutely no chance. So the pressure on her brain is 20, which is not critical. It's critical, critical but that her brain in the impact was disconnected from her stem and her eyes, so her brain was virtually free-floating in her head, along with all the other things. Is there a way of reconnecting that? N no, they, they told me it was impossible. They said, with man, this is impossible. So this child is completely impossible. So did your heart drop? No. No? Not at all. In fact, it increased in faith. What came out of your mouth when the doctors gave you such a report? I told him that not only would these two little girls live, but they would run and play again to declare the glory of my God, and I guaranteed them that they would both live and run and play and okay. be normal. Okay, tell me everything that was wrong with your granddaughter. Well, first of all, the most important thing was that her brain was severed from her eyes and her brain stem. The impact had disconnected it. In the head on impact, her brain hit her front of her head and then bounced back, and it disconnected it. Her face was tore all to pieces. I don't even know how many bones had broken because her face had hit the seat in front of her at a 70 mile an hour each vehicle impact. And then her skull was crushed in five places. And she was, had so many internal injuries they didn't know what was wrong with them within her. And then her right knee was crushed and her left leg was broken in two places. And that's what was wrong with my grandbaby. Mm. And the doctor said it's impossible. So with that disconnect, that would mean she probably could not uh, could she see? No, she was totally blind. Of course, she was knocked out completely. You know, she was not moving a muscle. But mm -hmm. uh, they told me she would not be able to see. Said she it said that, in fact, we went a, w a few days up into this, nearly a week later, and they'd been pumping her lungs with an oxygen machine of some kind. And they told us, Dr. Marks, which is head of neurology at Cook's Medical Center in Fort Worth, he said, we might as well go ahead and pull the tubes out of Caitlin this week, and when she dies, you do not want to resuscitate her. The, the tubes for what? Well, it was breathing. They mm -hmm. had a machine on her that was pumping her lungs. And so this, this tube going inside her, he said, was all that was keeping her alive. So they was pumping her lungs with air, with oxygen, and then was pumping the liquid out of her lungs several times a day. And so he said, when they do that, pull that, he said, she will die. What and did you I, say? I just told him, I said, no, sir, she won't die. I said, she will live and breathe and declare the glory of God. I guarantee it. And he said, sir, there's not a chance. He said, I've done two MRIs on your baby. And he said, both MRIs shows nothing attached to her brain. I said, how about her eyes? He said, well, her eyes appear to be okay, but they're disconnected from the brain. Mm. So it would never be able to see. He said, and there's no surgery in the world can put that back. Would she be able to eat? No. No, nothing. She could not eat, nothing. There was nothing attached to her to tell her to move, to breathe, to cough, anything. He said it was impossible for her to live. And I just told him, no, sir, with my God, it would so work. So did they pull the, uh, the tubes out of her so yes, sir, they she did. could not breathe? In fact, that Thursday morning, we had that meeting on Monday morning, and Thursday morning, Dr. Davis, which is a precious Christian woman lady, she walked in and told me that I was the only man she had ever met that refused to accept reality. And I told her, I said, ma'am, you think my little daughter, granddaughter, is reality? She said, well, of course. I said, no, ma'am, this Bible, this book I hold in my hand is the only reality in the world. And so when they pulled the tube out of her, um, what, they, they felt she would die? Oh, they knew she would die. Why? They knew because from everything they had saw on the 
MRIs and everything, there was nothing mm -hmm. attached to her brain, nothing to tell her to breathe or move. So they all knew from what they seen that she would die. It was impossible. They had never seen a child live with what she had. So that's why they could all tell me. Even Dr. Davis, which is, I mean, Dr. Marks even, which is head of neurology. But they were going me. to let her, her die and not help her well, after they pulled the cord? Was that the intent? Well, he, he, what he thought, he was trying to be merciful. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, if you pull the tubes, and she will die. He said, so don't, you don't want to resuscitate her because she would be a vegetable. She couldn't see, she couldn't hear. You know, she wouldn't be able to talk. You know, so, so this granddad said, I guarantee she will live and not die. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Unbelievable. Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here, and his wife, his daughter, and now, I mean, heading on collision, they're dead. His granddaughter, doctors give no chance. So they pulled the breathing tube out, and the doctor said, she, she's not going to live, or if she did, she'd be a vegetable, so we might as be, be merciful and pull the cord. Uh, but you guaranteed this would not happen, because if she, what would happen if she would cough once they pulled the breathing tube out? Well, then they wouldn't have to pump her lungs, you know. The, the, she would be able to cough, so she'd be able to get rid of the liquid in her lung. But they said that couldn't happen. But I guaranteed them when they pulled the tube, she would breathe over the machine and she would cough. What happened? And when they pulled the tube, she breathed two points over the machine and started coughing. So and that first guarantee would work. Yes, sir. But, worked. I mean, she's, she's blind, she's yes. a little more than a vegetable. What happened next? Well, we've continued to go through this whole ordeal. I continued to speak the Word of God over her day after day. Of course, her little face, which was tore all to pieces, in two weeks there was not a scar or a mark on the little face. How's that possible? I quoted John 14, 13, and 14 out of the Word of God over her face every day, many times a day, and the king... She would not need plastic surgery nothing, on her face? Nothing, nothing. No, there was no surgeries no. done on her, not any. Uh, briefly, what happened to her little friend who was also in the accident? Okay, little Kelly, she was six years old, and her head was tore all up, busted back and everything, and both pelvics were crushed in the incident. They didn't think she'd live at first either when I guaranteed them she would. And so I quoted the Word of God. They pulled, her mother and father had them pull the skin back down on Kelly's head and stitch it back up, but it left a huge scar across her head. And in a week, she was out of ICU. And another week, she's out of the hospital, which was very uh, astounding to the doctors. But in two and a half weeks, Kelly was back in school running and playing. How, how did she do that with the broken pelvics? That's what her doctor <laughs> wanted to know. <laughs> I understand. Back to your little Caitlin. Yes. You took her home and what? I took her home and I began to take the Word of God and I began to command her little body to be strong in the name of Jesus. I began to command her body to be strong until she could set up. Then I began to command her body to be strong so she could stand up, not only sit up. Then I command, began to command her body to walk in the name of Jesus. And within a matter of a few days, she could sta sit, stand, and then walk. And she's still totally blind. So we met and had a prayer meeting, 40 people. I did everything I knew to do, and I could not get her eyesight back. So I met. But wait a second, you told me there was a disconnect, so there, there's nothing that anyone could do. All the doctors told me none of this was possible, mm -hmm. unless like her right knee. They said that she'd never walk without surgery. I wouldn't so, let them do surgery on the knee. And the Lord healed her knee completely, the, uh, the left leg. We didn't do any surgeries at all, none. Jesus done it all. And we met and prayed for two hours. And within three weeks after we prayed, the Lord hooked up those little, uh, whatever they are, those cords to her brain, and today she can see. No problem. Okay, she can see. Yes. She can run. Yes. Uh, she, uh, but uh, what about eating? Oh, she couldn't eat, and I kept standing. So how was she, were you feeding her? She she, they put a little tube in her stomach, mm -hmm. a little plug that we fed her with a little pump, and we did this. Of course, when we left the hospital, the doctor said, don't give her anything to eat or drink by mouth, or if you do, you'll kill her. And so I went home and took the Word of God and began to quote the Word to the Lord and ask Him to fix it. But every two months, we'd take her back for a checkup. And every two months, all the time, we fed her through this little pump with a liquid injection into her stomach. The valve never worked. At 10 months, every two months, till the end of the 10th month, it still had not worked. And then I went back to the Lord, and I said, Lord, somewhere I've done something wrong. I've made a mistake. I've not done something right. So I went back to uh, Mark 11:24 and read that scripture. 
again. And it says, whatever you desire. Well, I desired for my grandbaby's valve to work. He says, when you pray, believe you've received it. So then I realized I had sinned. I was not trusting God. I was waiting for the doctor to tell me that it was fixed. So I repented and asked the Lord to forgive me. And then I asked him again on behalf of Mark 11, 24, to fix the valve. And I thanked him for doing it. Then I walked over to her house and told her daddy that God was waiting on us to feed her. And he had a real problem with that. But I told him that if I that was, If that was my daughter, I'd have a problem with well, that. She's, right. The doctors say she's going to die. That's right. But he had saw the Lord do all these other wonderful things. So he said, okay, you were right on everything else. So he said, we'll feed her. So we sat down there and gave her a little bowl of applesauce and a bottle of juice, and she ate and but, drank. Well, wait, she's going to die. That's what the, the doc doctor said. How could you do that? It's by faith in Jesus. But you knew the repercussion. But I also know what God will do if you trust him. You're, you're not in reality, are you? No, not at you're all. You're in something stronger. That's right, in faith. And so I spoke that word, and she ate and drank. And so she ate and drank with no problems. And then we fed her every day normal for the next six weeks till the 12th month. And then we took her back to Cook's Medical Center and they checked the valve and it was working. And now, then, now tell me the truth. Did she have a little bit of surgery, cosmetic on her face? No, just sir. not one knife, not one knife was put on this baby. So no. how, how did, it, I mean, I've, I've seen her. There's no scars on that no, little girl. No, the king of the universe, his name is Jesus. That's my only answer, Sid. I stood on his word completely and totally for this whole thing for my grandbaby. And he showed up for me. And I praise him for that. Uh, you know, I've got to see little Caitlin. Caitlin, would you come here to your granddad? Caitlin, honey, come to granddaddy. Come on, sugar. Come on. Here, come on, honey. Here she is. Here she comes. Come on, sugar. Come right around here. Come on. Come on, honey. She's five years old now. Come right here, honey. Come up here and step up here. Come up to granddaddy. Come oh, on. that's a big step. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on, sugar. Praise the Lord. What a God uh, we serve. Caitlin, are you still ticklish? <laughs> if I was to go right, right here, would it, could I tickle you? Uh, do you love your granddad? Yep. Would you kiss him? Would you kiss your granddad? Mm-hmm. Oh, You're my oh. sweetheart, sugar. Yeah, you know, she wouldn't be here today if you didn't believe God. That's right. Yeah. Oh, you're tickling me. <laughs> I see what you're doing, Caitlin. Turn about is fair play. Listen, I can have fun right now, but this is beyond fun. This is reality. They accused him of not being in reality. I accused them of not being in reality. You see, what we call reality is temporary, but there is a supernatural realm called eternity. And Thurman had insight into this realm. You had insight into this realm yes, because of the Word of God, not because of anything you heard. It's just the promises of God. You guess what? See, if it was something he heard, you could say, I'm grateful he heard it. But this is better. It's something written in the Bible. The Bible says all, what are you struggling with? The Bible says all things are possible to those who believe, not just because you have faith, faith in your faith. It's because you have faith in what God has done. You have faith in the goodness and the love of God. What do you need in your life? I want to agree with you. If God could, look at, look at her face. Where's the scars? What happened to them? I don't see any, Caitlin. I don't see any scars at all. You see any scars? <laughs> I know. Listen, oh, God is so good. He loves you as much as he loves Caitlin, as much as he loves me. Oh, does he love you? I, if you could just feel it, you can. I believe that some of you, you're going to feel the arms of Jesus coming around you because you're perfect. No, but because he loves you just the way you are. If you'll say, God, let Jesus become real to me. I mean, no great theologian, theologi I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> 
But you know it. No theo You don't have to be a theologian. All you have to do is be real. Amen. That's, be real. God's real. You be real. Amen.